Introducing the Outlet by Sarder Heyman. The Outlet brings you luxurious Sarder Heyman quality jewelry at unbeatable prices. Shop our expansive inventory of overstocked merchandise and a vast estate collection that just hasn't found its home yet. This is your chance to own stunning designer jewelry at a fraction of the cost. Elevate your style at the Outlet by Sarder Heyman, where luxury and affordability meet. Downtown at 12th and O or online at SarderHeyman.com. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Underground, who has been serving local contractors and utility contractors all across the state since 1997. When you see the black and white trucks, you know the baddest dudes in the business have arrived. Bauer is currently looking for equipment operators, laborers, diesel mechanics, and aerial linemen. Join the brotherhood built on hard work, authentic people, and pedigree of success. Bauer, a family-friendly company who reminds you, go be ready. Reading may be the most valuable skill your child will ever learn. And research proves that when children read outside the classroom, they do much better in school. I'm Jenny Benson, president of the Nebraska State Education Association. It's easy to picture yourself reading with a young child curled up in your lap, but don't forget about your older children. They also need encouragement to read. So set aside some time to read together and help your child achieve and succeed. Sponsored by the Nebraska State Education Association, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association in this station. This is Monster Jam. Witness Big Air. Two-wheel skills, backflips, and all-out racing. Monster Jam, as big as it gets. Brought to you by the original Super Glue. Stop by your local participating Westlake Ace Hardware locations for your $10 savings coupon. Restrictions may apply. See store for details. Coming to Pinnacle Bank Arena this Friday and Saturday. Electrical Enterprises in Roca reminds you. The men and women of our military dedicate themselves to serving our country. Their commitment and courage keep our country safe and strong. Let us honor those who've lost their lives in the line of duty and salute those serving today. This from Electrical Enterprises in Roca. For all your residential and commercial electrical construction needs, call 402-438-5822. We live in the land of the free thanks to the brave. Old School with DP and J. Do you think it's too early to talk about Patrick Mahomes as the greatest of all time. You know, to be honest with you, I think he might be on ahead of the pace. It was definitely on on pace, maybe ahead of the pace. I think right now everything that he does is going to get over overblown, and I think people <laughs> so quickly forgot the twenty year run of the Patriots, not five six years, twenty year run of Tom Brady and the Patriots. On uh, ninety three seven, the ticket and the ticket FM dot com. This is the happy hour. You guys want a happy hour? Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America. Yeah, I'll maybe I'll come for a couple. Here are your hosts, Nick Sainert. I am a huge guy. And Enrique Alvarez Clary. C is for chunk. <laughs> Brought to you by Empire Fence and Netting on 937 the ticket and the ticketfm.com. <laughs> Let's try that again. Welcome in. Happy Monday. I don't know what mic you're on. This is the happy hour, 93.7 The Ticket, theticketfm.com. Nick Sainert and Rico with you. Huge thanks to Empire Fence and Netting for their support as always. And today we're joined to start the show by Jay Foreman. What's up, Jay? What's happening, fellas? How's it going? It's going pretty good. How was the weekend? It was good until Kentucky decided to... <laughs> Dookie right down there, like just busting my bracket. Yeah, it seems like for for a Sweet Sixteen that's pretty chalky, right? When you, you look at it, the average seed is uh, just a little over a three. Um, in the in the Sweet Sixteen, the average seed is. It's the first time since 2019 uh, that all four number one seeds have made the Sweet Sixteen for for a year where it's pretty chalky in terms of Sweet Sixteen. Uh, you know, finalists. A lot of people's brackets are ruined. Yeah, it's Kentucky. Bad. Hey, mine's sitting pretty. I'm good. Is your your national champion is still alive? Shout out to you, Con. Basic pick. Who'd you uh, who was I, who was I gonna pick? go? Marquette? Okay. I was you I did UConn in, in one and North Carolina in the other. North Carolina looks good. Yeah. North Carolina looks is, good. If they both make the final four, that'll be a national championship game. 
Well, they they would play in the final, final four. four. Or, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. If they both both oh, yeah, that would be the national championship. Who would you, you pick? Nick? That's that's how I feel. Man, I mean, so like the I, I picked Marquette, and I've I've given my reason why they're going to lose to NC State. Mar- Marquette, Marquette, they were able to knock off Colorado by four, eighty-one seventy-seven over the weekend. Tyler Kolek had twenty-one points, eleven assists, and five rebounds. Um, with a messed up oblique. Yeah, yeah, he's still still not a hundred percent from his oblique injury. Cam Jones has probably been one of the best players of the tournament so far. Yeah. Um, twenty eight points in their first round game against Western Kentucky. Then I think he had close to I think he had twenty uh, again on uh, on Saturday or on Sunday, excuse me, against Colorado. Colorado was a tough out. That, that was that they they play. I mean, we saw the changes like with De Silva in the second half with Colorado. To where they they truly were a Sweet Sixteen contender. Yeah, and you know they had to play in the playing game. They did. Yeah, and they and they probably feel like they should have not had to play in the playing game. I felt like we talked about it uh, off air that or when we were at uh, Wings and uh, Rings out there, sixty eighth and O Street. Big shout out to them. Great job last week. Yeah. Um, by the way, that I felt like they should have been you know a higher seed or a lower seed in the case uh, than a ten. Um, they play they play hellified defense. Um, they they got great point guard play. Uh, mm-hmm. Guard play in the tournament is huge. Yeah, we you asked me about Kentucky. Guard play is huge. Oakland guard play was huge to make the upset, and uh, they gave oof, they gave them all that they can handle. And uh, but they were able to pull through. And and and, and Colorado didn't have an easy way. No, really easy right? They had to play in game. Mm-hmm. Then they had yeah. to play Florida. That was a phenomenal game. Yes, I mean. Mm-hmm. Right down to the buzzer, and then you go right back into another game all the way down there, and you just ran out of gas a little bit. It felt like if they, they didn't have the play in the play in, you think they would have potentially it just, felt, just felt like a couple shots that they normally yeah. were making yeah. in the first a couple heavier legs. It was heavier. especially in the first half. They they started out zero for zero for six from yeah. beyond the three point line. They're one of the best three point shooting teams yeah. in the country. Yeah, and then they have a they have a very good. I like their roster where they have you know NBA players through the wings, point guard, and so forth. Then they got the big man in the middle. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it Tompkins? Yes. Yeah, Tompkins, yeah, the number former 44. big TCU yeah. uh, transfer. That's a big and, and he, for a 6'10", or he's listed at 6'11", they generously list him at 265. I would say more 285. He plays below the rim, mm-hmm. but he's extremely effective. Then off the bench is Lincoln Southeast own. own BD, Ben yep. Got Dak, comes in. That's right. And what's he? The rim runner, shot blocker, alley oop dunk, long, long. athletic, yeah, just, right. So he doesn't yeah. have the bulk, but you come in there and he has the wingspan. It yep. seems like a, like just keeps going on. <laughs> so he's able. They're able to play defense multiple ways. And if you want to take a page out of their book, yeah, that's how you make a run. That's how you're a Sweet Sixteen team. Unfortunately, that you you came against a better team Mm -hmm. in Marquette, maybe more rested team. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make a run, and if you want to be a like a like I would say sustainable, but to be able to play multiple places, I always say portable. It's like football. You got to be able to play different ways, and and that doesn't matter what sport it is. Is that a team like a roster makeup that Nebraska could potentially try to copy? You can, but it's hard. I mean, look, it's hard. Like obviously, not the same kind of athletes, but just like. The, the style-ish? Well, yeah, for the stylist. But let's be honest, right? I mean, me and Nick call games all the time for high school. And I know BD from when he was a freshman. The the end product that you're seeing just essentially four years ago, mm-hmm. or right four years from four years ago to now, it's not a – my man has something that you can't mm-hmm. over-recruit. He's six foot 11. He's going to – he's continually to, to grow, to mature, and he can jump out of the gym. Yeah. And he actually has three-point range. That's just not normal. So you got to think for for our, everybody. Yeah, keep it simple. So listen for everybody yeah. out there. At this point in time last year, because I'm just starting to get into AU, he didn't have an offer. Yeah, he was. I think he was going to prep school or a smaller college. Yep. He went and That's played right. in this like kind of when you graduate as a senior, you can play in some tournaments, and they showed it through like Supreme or whoever he played with that Colorado came and looked at him. And next, rest is history. Mm-hmm. It's by chance, and so. You get lucky like that with an adi- late addition scholarship guy, and he starts to pay dividends towards mm-hmm. the end of your season. That's how you make a run. Well, and it was it was also interesting just how Colorado plays their their defense. They put 
um, a, a guy down low just in the middle, right, right in front of the basket. And and they basically just park him there. Yeah. Which can either one either one of their big guys. Yeah, either one of their big guys, which can hurt them if the other two mis- team is shooting the three ball well. And the first half, Marquette jumped out to a bigger lead because they were shooting the three ball well. Then it kind of flipped. Colorado came out of the locker room. They started out really, really strong. Like I said, the the Silva guy. Um, he can stretch the floor a little bit. He was a little more aggressive in the early going of the they, second half. They switched him one side of the court. That's right. And they started to feature him. And, and, Mar- yeah. and Marquette struggled shooting the three ball a little bit. And before you knew it, it was it was 77-77. And just a couple of minutes left, and you're sitting there going, well, how did this get away from Marquette? But it was because Colorado, they, they figured out a way to shoot the basketball, and they got a couple of misses. Um, and that's one thing like Nebraska, right? That... Man, just it, it was and 402, 464, 5685. You look at Nebraska's game on Friday, and not only did Wade Taylor start the day five for five from beyond the three point line, but they were featuring guys that they did. It's not that they were, were apparent all season long, but it was they figured out ways to make guys effective every single time down the floor. And Nebraska, then on top of it, didn't help themselves out a whole lot uh, by, by not being physical. They panicked. They weren't physical. It was like they're, they're, there's always this unique part about uh, and I, uh, about playing big time sports, and it's it, it's and you see it all the time. Say in high school in a big game, uh, me and Nick again call basketball games. So you saw the the maturation, let's just say, of Lincoln Southeast yeah. in their program. Right? It felt like last year, probably they. I felt like. They were happy to get there, right? And then this year, you, I felt, me and Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, this team was a better team than it was last year. They even had BD on it. And, and, and even lost a couple. They lost they, a guard. They lost a couple right. of guards, lost, I should they say. They lost yeah. a lot of talent, but I felt like this was a better team. Yeah. They were ready for the moment. They, they kind of expected to be there. Right. They expected to be in the mix. And they embraced big moments. That's yeah. how they're able to go and beat Creighton Prep for the second year in a row on a, on a walk-off turnaround jumper <laughs> by Jake Hickelman. So when you look when you look at Nebraska, where a, a team like Texas A and M, you have to do your homework from beginning to end. And we talked about it before; they were preseason top ten team. Yeah. When you look at their makeup now, listen, Taylor was going. He he going. If if you didn't know the background on this dude from the get go, from Dallas where he was at, he can flat out. He's legendary in the basketball area in Dallas. So you can go and you got to look at Buzz the way he likes to play. Styles make fights. They're going to beat you up. They're going to run you off the three-point line with different type of body types. Why? How did he learn that? Because he had to play teams like Duke all the time. So when you're playing against a J.J. Redick and those type of, you know, snipers, he had to go back into his old, you know, I guess, black book of playbooks on how to defense k Where Nebraska got into trouble, I felt like, is it's okay. You know, you have, everybody, I always say, everybody has motivation, right? Everybody's going to be motivated at the beginning of the game. Do you have the discipline? That's how you win. So Nebraska, when they got the first punch, they did punch back. Mm -hmm. But then I felt like defensively, they were doing things that they hadn't done all year. Now that's because you get you get kind of caught up in the moment. What you see a couple easy layups missed. Then you saw one of the biggest plays of this game. That essentially, when you're watching, I know from coaching, you're like, all right, this game's over. Nebraska had a good defensive series. They, they just, in case they started to get going, they scored, came back on defense, forced them into a hard shot, long rebound to the opposite side. One of the guys that was supposed, that's their rebound, essentially the defense, your backside guy got to hit that, get that yeah. defensive rebound. He tried to run out. They got it, put it back up. Radford got it and won. Game over. That's a five point turnaround. That's a momentum changer. That's a deflator. Um, and I think it's, it's, you know, it was a learning lesson and Texas A&M probably played better than they're, they, they're hot right now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we just didn't adjust to the physicality, yeah. you know, they like, they like to play. I think that's the biggest thing. The physicality there, Texas A&M shoots close to 50% from the field. They shoot over 50% from, from beyond the three point line on Friday. Um, and they, they heavily out rebounded Nebraska, which you kind of expected, but it's also possible to be out rebounded and and win games or at least stay competitive. I thought just over the course of time, right? Uh, uh, on Friday, 
certain people just didn't show up. Right. Yeah. And we, and I think, you know, we can know those. I mean, one of your, one of your key players had four shots. Your other, one of your other starters just attempted five shots. Um, I, like, yeah, there was, there was high volume of shots from, from Kase. Didn't hit him that, that high of, you know, high of success, I guess on, uh, on Friday. Um, and then it was kind of just off the bench, a little bit disappointing. Like you don't forget, like part of this year for Nebraska was that, man, they can go to the bench and not have this dramatic drop off. Yeah. And that wasn't the case down, okay. down the stretch, not even just on Friday. That was kind of the case over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, um, that's true. yeah. It's the, like the, you know, the guys off the bench just didn't score or make as big of an, uh, of a scoring impact in the game as maybe they have in, in previous, previous months. Well, I think the better that you do the you, you know, the more that people are going to defend you. It, so, Understandable. So, so that's give, yes. give credit to what, they did earlier in the season and then also to the coaching staff. I want to ask you this. More importantly, I think Texas A&M forced Nebraska into some the difficulty. I call it difficulty rating shots. Mm -hmm. It was out of the roof. I'm talking about the shots. Even when they had pull-ups, they were getting bumped. And, the, and I think the biggest thing, here's the difference between Texas A&M and Rutgers. Rutgers has maybe one guy that attacks the offensive rebounds, you know, that you got to really be, okay, we got a team rebound against him. It's the big guy in the middle, right? Everybody on Texas A&M, offensive rebounds, Everybody. even the guy on the bench. So what does that do? That puts so much stress on you from your defensive standpoint that it, one mistake, they, and then they just keep gut punching you, gut punching you, gut punching you. And then also I'm going to say this, is the physicality, yes. But, okay, that, I would say that. But then also I think that, and this is what came back to, I think, bite Texas a and I felt like last night Texas a and was a better team than Houston. But mm. but I will say this. The way that that game was refed oh, allowed, key part. Uh, allowed oh, Texas A&M to get away with it. Because mm. there was one um, mm. where Josiah Alec had it. He went. He was going for the – there was a clear jersey tug, yeah. a clear shove or something like – well, and then there was a couple when he missed the bunny. You're getting shoved, right? Okay. Well, then – Turned it back to tomorrow or last night in that great game against Houston against Texas A&M, and they were, they, Texas A&M was going through the hoop. They were getting hit four or five times. Yeah. Yes, Houston had forty-five fouls. They probably got the equivalent of eighty fouls. It was funny. That, it's funny that you bring that up because even even the broadcasters yes. before the game last night, as the referee was walking to center court to throw the jump or the 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 tip in the air, they said uh, Spiro was like on on, on uh, TNT was just like listen. We talked to both these coaches, and they both said how crucial it is on how it's refed. And they, they both said that. or I should yeah. say the broadcasters said that they, when they talked to coaches, they mentioned, we don't know who the referees are yet, but that's going to be a yeah, big part true. in this game. And then that's when you know Spiro and the, the broadcasters would announce the referees' names. That That's a big piece that, that people don't think about. Is But also, I think with like just the physicality piece of it all, it felt like on Friday, especially now, obviously, once the score kind of got out of hand in a wider margin, things like this will, will are tend, you know, tend to happen. But it felt like an, a football game that you're facing off against just a bruising running back. And, yeah. and you can stop him for the first quarter and a half. But then those one and a half yard carries turns into four. And then the four breaks turns yeah. into six. And you yeah, they, consistently they pounding it away. That by the end of the game, it, it might only be a, a twelve point ball game, and it feels like, yeah, you know what? I guess on according to the scoreboard, you're kind of in this one, but man, it just yeah. feels like you're so far away because you can't make up ground. That's how it felt like at halftime. Was that man, Nebraska? According to the score, yeah, probably could. You know, it was a fourteen point ball game at half, and you're in March Madness. You're saying, okay, anything can really happen here if Nebraska hits some shots, and if the tendencies that we know going in where. Texas A&M misses a lot of shots, but often, you know, rebounds well, obviously. But the first part of that is if they miss a lot of shots, yeah, Nebraska can find a way back into this one. But man, it just felt like they were just beaten down so many times and they just didn't have a shot. Yeah, I think, I mean, that was a little bit of it. I think also sometimes you get in those moments and you just don't play, you know, whether it's, you know, do you run enough clock? Right, you know, do do you make defense? Do you make Texas A and M play more yeah. defense or longer? It, it, that that will lessen the physicality. But if you're yeah. coming down, and there was one, <laughs> I think it was a fast break, pull up three. Well, you ain't tired them out because that's a long rebound. They're right into their secondary break. That's essentially an outlet pass 
for Texas A&M because they're quicker to the ball on long rebounds. And so, you know, I think that if you had to sit back and probably re-game plan that, maybe a little bit of, obviously, more patience. And then also just would, I guess I would bet that Taylor wouldn't continue to hit like that. Yeah. Now here became the bigger problem. Okay. Let's just say coming into it, Taylor's going to hit like that. Well, Radford and 35 were getting more busy than actually Taylor was for the the majority of the game. Mm -hmm. They were breaking you down, down the defense. They were essentially backing you guys all the way down the lane. So you got to hit force with force. And remember, there was a couple times this year where Fred used to, Fred said, we need to play with more force. And that's what it came down to. It, by no means do I think Nebraska was like, you know, like, like rolling over. But sometimes mm-hmm. when you get, there's so much that goes on around here that when you get there, you'd be like, okay, we, we actually got to play. You know, we got to, we, hey. we got to play, play, mm-hmm. like play for real. And that maybe that's a little. He bit said they had so many guys that could just break you down off the dribble, drive to the drive to the bucket, and that's that's kind of what they were feasting on in that second half, at least, because they started the game hitting all those threes. Wade Taylor was hitting, 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 and then the second half comes and they're just driving to the bucket, kind of taking advantage of that physicality and that whistle that you know they're allowed to play. So they're like, all right, I'm yeah. putting the shoulder, putting my shoulder into your chest. They're not calling it. I'm backing you off and I'm getting this layup. Yeah, I mean, think about it. How many Euro steps did you see for them? They coming straight downhill, mm-hmm. just well, el- nothing fancy. And elbows, and knees, you, everything. and they're not and right. they're not blowing the whistle. So right. they're like, all right, they're letting us play. So I'm gonna back you off with this shoulder. You're gonna take a couple steps back because I'm I'm coming downhill full force, stronger than you, and I'm gonna lay this in. If you yeah. try to hack me, guess what? I'm laying it in, and I'm getting well, a free throw. And it's funny that you mentioned that that we're talking about that because if you were watching the A and M Houston game last night in overtime, that was their plan. It was to go right down at you, yeah. Right, shove it right down your throat, and 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 they just weren't hitting layups, and yeah. ultimately enough, they weren't maybe getting some foul calls either. Yeah, they were horrible from the free throw um, line. Yeah, they too. were bad from the free throw line. I w- one last thing on Friday's game with Nebraska, that that first you know 10, 11, 12 minutes of the game was some of the most Ex- yeah. exciting basketball yeah, it was electric, great. right? Yeah. Because it was high percentage, not, maybe not even looks, but shots. High, it was highly skillful yeah, basketball. Yeah, you yeah. you were. I mean, there were you were draining shots. It was a it was a. I mean, multiple lead changes back and forth, back and forth, and it felt like honestly that was kind of Nebraska's game. Like it, when you look at the way that those two schools played, and Buzz Williams, I think, even said it during one of the in game uh, interviews that they did, or maybe it was at the half. That fast pace. Taylor's more to Nebraska, yeah. Usually, but A and M was able then in the second half, especially to kind of slow it down once again, play their type of game. But that's where, like, in the first ten minutes of it, and okay, so at like the nine thirty eight mark, Obasiki hit a layup to put Ohio or not Ohio State, Texas A and M up thirty to twenty nine over Nebraska. At that point, when it was like the 22 22, 30 to 29, 31 30 Nebraska, at that point, I was sitting there going, okay, I feel like I feel still confident in Nebraska because I don't believe that Texas AM can keep shooting like this, not for the for a full 40 minutes, but also this plays into Nebraska's strengths. Yeah. And, I felt, and it just didn't. Uh, and I felt like Texas AM came out and they, and they hit, just say the first half, they went on their run right at the very yeah. end. So I'm like, okay, well, then eventually Nebraska's going to go on a Nebraska run. And they kind of did. The problem is they had too many defensive breakdowns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to, so you got to think, even when they were down by, like, say, like 18, and they go, say, go on like a 5 0 run or a 6 to 2 run, just like a mini run. Well, then boom, you give up an offensive re- rebound. Boom, you, you don't get a defensive yeah. rebound. It goes off your hands. Mm-hmm. You weren't able to stack stops. And scoring never back. just a very deflating feeling where you're finally getting this run going, you're feeling good, and all of a sudden AM misses a shot, they get the board, they get the reset, and you're like, ah, dang it. Like you know, you know what it is? You know what it is? You, you, it was like it's like the, like in football, like football. Say you drive, you get over the 50, you get an explosive play offsides, legal procedure, yeah. punt. It just stacks. Okay, defense, you yeah. stop him, fumble, fumble the punt, get it back. You just kind of get don't ever get out of they, neutral or first or second gear. And there was also a stretch in the second half, especially, I think it was like the 13 34 mark 
as I'm looking here. Um, there, there, there were there were moments, yeah. I mean, so like I look at it this way. So from thir- the thirteen thirty four mark, Rink Mass makes a two point bucket to make it a seventy six to sixty deficit, and they did. They score Texas A and M scored three a total of three points the next four and a half minutes of game time. However, Nebraska scored zero. Like those are stretches that even in even in a moment where you were able to to get some stops off or defensively for a matter of four minutes of game time and unable to chip into the deficit. That was, I think there was because there was a moment in the second half, and I can't remember if that was the specific one. But where it was like, all right, Texas A and M, they're not not cold, but they're struggling now, right? They're they're starting yeah, to force some to, things. Yeah. It's time to make your move, right? Because yeah. I and I think Strick tweeted this out, but I remember telling the the people that I was watching the game with, like, all right, now you work media timeouts, right? So at, at the sixteen under to media timeout, it's okay. What do we need to get the deficit to by the under twelve, yeah. yeah. and then at the under eight? And it was for me, it was like, all right, just get it to around 10 points at the under eight minute media timeout. And from that 1340 stretch up until the, the nine and a half minutes left in the ball game with you, when you see only three points scored for AM, man, that feels like a time where you could have made a move yeah. to at least get it to 11, maybe 12, who knows, maybe nine. And then you got 10 minutes of the, of game time left and anything can happen at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Anything can happen at that point right there too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, look, I think it's a lesson learned. I think it's obviously, it's, it's, it definitely was a positive um, season. I think it was styles make fights. And, and, and I think that, say, say if Nebraska was able to face um, a, a Northwestern or yeah. a different number, a different, you know, say a Northwestern, or if they were able to face um, a Utah State or TCU or, you know, let's say Mississippi State, they played Michigan State, a, a different matchup in their first yeah. round. And then had they play a Texas A&M type team in the <laughs> second round, I think they would have been more mm-hmm. equipped for it. I, I mean, that's just my I, opinion. I look at them as like, okay, what if what if they, just because a seven seed was not out of reach, I think yeah. if they, they would have been able to finish off the game against Illinois in the Big Ten tournament, I think we're talking about Nebraska as a, as a seven seed. If they're able to face a Drake. Yeah. In, the, in in round one. Now, right. Drake it was very good. I think they probably sh- they should have won against Washington State second year in a row where they've blown a lead. Um, but even if you want to move them down a seed line, right? What if they're in Northwestern spot and they play FAU? Yeah. I, I think, um, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong here. And I, I said this this morning. Like, we talk about guard play, obviously. Every team that's in the Sweet 16 now has a dude that can take over anytime. Yeah. At any point, yeah. at any point, whether it's Filipowski or McCain from Duke, whether it's uh Kolek or uh, Cam Jones from Marquette or all the, the Trey Alexander or Baylor Shireman from Creighton, Dalton connect from Tennessee, Caleb yeah. love from Arizona. You got uh, Davis for yeah, Carolina, yeah, RJ Davis for Carolina. Also yeah. Bam Baycott down yeah. below. Um, Terrence Shannon jr. Is playing as well as probably anybody in the country right now yeah. for Illinois over the last couple of weeks. And Alabama has and, multiple. And guys. that's just what it, it unfortunately felt like on Friday, Nebraska just needed a guy to kind of dig in and say, I'm going to will Nebraska back to at least chip in the deficit. And they just didn't have that on yeah. Friday. Yeah, it was a little bit, you know, I think it was a little bit of circumstantial. And then obviously yeah. it's a, it's a, it was a big step you know, for this team. And I, 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 I truly believe now, granted it's disappointing. Uh, Cause I felt like the team had the camaraderie to, you know, I would say you have to, you, you got to be able to take it to the next level. Okay. That's fine. That's you could just, we well, can table that, right. That's a disappointing yeah. loss. But I do think if they were able to play a different game, even if they had to play in a play in game. So like, just say they had to play a Boise state mm-hmm. or, um, Let's see the other one. I guess or Colorado State or Virginia. I'm looking at it. if they yeah. were if they were able to be Colorado State and maybe play against Texas. Texas doesn't play this type of basketball. Or if they came in as a seven seed and play a Colorado State, or even if they came in at a little bit higher seed and played even Nebraska's better off playing even against a Texas Tech or or in this case a South Carolina or Duquesne or Duquesne or somebody like that yeah. to where, you know, like BYU, I mean, very easy. If you say, if you pull out that game against um, Illinois, you 
this might be Nebraska there at BYU against Duquesne. Then you get the rematch. Now, Duquesne does mix. Now, Duquesne will heat you up. One. They yeah. they will heat you up. But the I think also what people don't realize is the type of athletes that was out there for Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. When you got a big man that's 6'11 and 250 pounds, is probably one of the fastest guy in the end the end and can jump. And he's a big dude. Mm-hmm. And then you bring the other guy. Then you bring three, four. I mean, that's just hard because there's the gaps aren't there. And yeah. so I just think it's a styles make fights, and in the, in the the style would be fine in the middle of the season because Texas A and M wasn't playing at this type of clip. Yep, you're catching the best version of them, which everybody thought they were going to be, mm-hmm. and you got them right now, and it just is a bad time. Kent says on the text line, "Do you guys feel like they they felt the unneeded pressure around the whole?" Never won an NCAA tournament game. I, I feel like personally, maybe no. I I would lean towards no because they uh, they made they've it known been, at the beginning been, of the season. They've been very vocal about it the entire year. Yeah, like Josiah Alec made a very good, very made it very clear. I came back to to do this. Like this is why I came back. Yeah. So I, maybe maybe once you get into the moment, it's a little tougher than just being vocal about it. Yeah, it's a lot easier to say it at the beginning of the season than when you're actually in the game and you can actually do it and make it happen. Yeah. But I, I just think that um, there were, there was a lot of things on the floor. Even even once the nerves should have been worked out, like right yeah. by that by that first minute, you know, the first or second media timeout, you feel like all right, nerves should be kind of yeah. uh, out of the way. Mm-hmm. They they came out fine. I mean, both sides, they they were shooting just fine. Um, it you just know, couldn't get stops. You know, I know they put out the video without with Derek Walker, and I I, I, yeah. I would say this, like, rink mass is great, but rink mass with Derek Walker, with Josiah Alec, that doesn't happen. Oh, no. That, 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 no. that, that physical, that it, doesn't happen. And that's, that's, that's the, the timing of, of this, what sucks, which is you wish you could give Derek Walker a COVID, Walmart. like a COVID year yeah. or, or super senior year. Is because when you have a guy that that operates like that, that's just who he is. It's, so it's like one thing about this, like people always ask about how do you make your football team tough? Well, you got to do it every day. That, that's what that's what this is who you are, mm-hmm. right? And so that's just, just probably what it is. But I, you know, I just think look, Texas A and M played extremely well. Give them credit. You know, I felt like they're better than he, I feel like that. I'd I'd probably. I like. I would probably like Texas A and M's chances better against Duke than Houston's. I think they're a more skillful team. I think they're a more team. They're a better team that yeah. can travel, and that's the same thing. So that's a credit to Nebraska, though, right? Yeah. Um, and you play. You're playing. You played the best version of Texas A and M. On the flip side, think about Auburn and Yale. Right? They're they're having the same conversations back there in in Auburn, Alabama. You know how did this happen? We want to talk about Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, they misspelled his name on the front of the page. They trying to get him out of there with thirty three million dollars buy on purpose. Yeah. And now, granted, now he's look when you do one and dones and all that, you get in trouble. But you know, look, they they, they got a they got a good benchmark to start. It should help in recruiting. It should that help part, in everything else. That part, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you and so fester on this, learn from it, keep it in your back pocket, take it and build on it. Let, let's talk about that, right? The approach now, because it is the off season and Nebraska basketball will have some holes to, to plug. Uh, they'll have some additions to, to bring into the rock, uh, the roster in the locker room. And so we'll talk about that when we return as a little bit of news came out earlier today. Nebraska has officially lost one guard to the transfer portal. Not much of a surprise there, but nonetheless, it is a little bit of news here as the off season is officially here. And that means transfer portal work is underway as uh, Nebraska will try to build off of this season and the NCAA tournament berth once again. A season where they finish 23 and 11 on the year in a first round exit in the NCAA tournament. All right, let's step aside. Huge thanks to Empire Fence and Eddie for their support of the show. As always, don't go anywhere. You're listening to the happy hour on 93.7 The Ticket. Follow Nick and Enrique on Twitter at Nick underscore Sainert and at Radio Rico AC. More of Happy Hour is next on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. 
Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Underground, who has been serving local contractors and utility contractors all across the state since 1997. When you see the black and white trucks, you know the baddest dudes in the business have arrived. Bauer is currently looking for equipment operators, laborers, diesel mechanics, and aerial linemen. Join the brotherhood built on hard work, authentic people, and pedigree of success. Bauer, a family-friendly company who reminds you, go be ready. This is Brad with Midwest Bank, proudly serving our Nebraska communities for over 70 years. We're a community bank, making local decisions, supporting local organizations, and helping local businesses and farms succeed. We are dedicated to serving our clients and helping them meet their financial needs with sound, innovative banking solutions. From an array of checking and deposit accounts, cash management services, to small business, real estate, and ag lending, we're here for you. Your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Find out more at MidwestBank.com. Member FDIC. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, Garage Doors, and more. Hey guys, it's Bill Bush. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty has opened a new location in Pender, Nebraska, in addition to their office in Lincoln. The real estate world can be confusing, so why wouldn't you want an expert helping you every step of the way? If you're looking to buy or sell farmland in Nebraska, Kansas, or Iowa, give Ethan Sorensen a call today at 402-380-0432 or visit them online at nextagrealestate.com. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty with locations in Lincoln and now Pender, Nebraska. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. Jake Sorensen here for The Body Shop. My wife is nearing her due date with our first child and has been in need of a good massage as her body continues to change and adapt. Dennis and the team at The Body Shop were incredible with the prenatal massage that she's still talking about today. I was also able to get a deep tissue massage, so it was a great bonding experience and a unique couple's massage in general. If you're in need of stress relief, book a massage today at thebodyshoplincoln.com, The Body Shop at 48th and A. Introducing The Outlet by Sarter Heyman. The Outlet brings you luxurious Sarter Heyman quality jewelry at unbeatable prices. Shop our expansive inventory of overstocked merchandise and a vast estate collection that just hasn't found its home yet. This is your chance to own stunning designer jewelry at a fraction of the cost. Elevate your style at the outlet by Sarter Heyman, where luxury and affordability meet. Downtown at 12th and O or online at SarterHeyman.com. Hi folks, Sean Callahan here for Couple Chevrolet GMC and the Chevrolet and GMC Truck Month is now underway. We've got huge savings in Louisville. Get 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months on select models. Yes, you heard right. That's 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months happening right now at Couple. So take that short money saving drive down 144th Street or check us out online at couplecars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with roof credit. Stock number G214773. 937 the ticket fox kfxl weather brought to you by bryant air conditioning heating electrical and plumbing your lincoln forecast for today a chance of rain expected throughout the day see falling temperatures with a high around 52 tonight a chance of wintry mix and blowing snow possible to see a low around 23 and tomorrow a slight chance of snow in the morning otherwise mainly sunny and windy high around 36 I'm meteorologist kyle cluck for 93.7 the ticket and the ticket fm.com Electrical Enterprises in Roca reminds you, the men and women of our military dedicate themselves to serving our country. Their commitment and courage keep our country safe and strong. Let us honor those who've lost their lives in the line of duty and salute those serving today. 
This from Electrical Enterprises in Roca. For all your residential and commercial electrical construction needs, call 402-438-5822. We live in the land of the free thanks to the brave. Reading may be the most valuable skill your child will ever learn. And research proves that when children read outside the classroom, they do much better in school. I'm Jenny Benson, president of the Nebraska State Education Association. It's easy to picture yourself reading with a young child curled up in your lap, but don't forget about your older children. They also need encouragement to read. So set aside some time to read together and help your child achieve and succeed. Sponsored by the Nebraska State Education Association, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association in this station. You're listening to The Happy Hour with Nick Sainert. I vomited last night. And Enrique alvarez Clary. I literally vomited. I threw up. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome back in. It's a Monday, happy hour, 93.7, the ticket, the ticket, fm.com. Nick, Rico, and Jay Foreman with you. 402-464-5685, the Honda Lincoln Hotline, and the Starter Heyman text line are open for you guys, as well as the Starter Heyman Jewelers live video stream, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Allo Channel 961 are all available to you. Um, 402, we went to this one, 402-464-5685. Uh, got asked about a couple of people potentially transferring back to Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't have to be, you know, a, a scientist to know exactly who they may be referencing. I think when let, let's talk about needs for Nebraska going forward, right? We can kind of keep some of the, the specific names out of this, but the, the needs going forward position wise, instantly for me, it's point guard. Um, you kind of need a a facilitator, right? We see in March Madness specifically, and a lot of the top tier programs is they have somebody that can run the offense that provides a little bit of a scoring threat potentially. But then I think also Nebraska, we we saw it physical big man could, could certainly be a spot where they could improve. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody in the country wants those two things. That's true. And, and, uh, you know, and have backups upon backups for him. Um, I mean, I think you just need to, if you can do that, but then, uh, I mean, you got to address some, some area, every team's going to have, ho- that have holes. And so you just got to, uh, you know, along with that, you also have to have a mentality change and sometimes bringing in a player, whether it's at those positions that you mentioned or another position can do that for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think Gary did it for us. Um, he's kind of, you know, he understands what it's like to kind of junkyard dog mentality. Need more of that. Yeah. Um, I think Josiah Alec, you know, you again, you talk about Darrell Walker. Same way with Josiah. You wish you had another even half a season, uh, you know, with him just because he, I think he started to get his bearings underneath mm-hmm. him and understand, you know, what, what it's like to play in the Big Ten. Obviously, he's different. So, table setter, and then obviously you just want to make sure where these pieces fit into what you already have. You want them to add to it. You don't want to add pieces that take away from it. We've seen this, seen that before. Yeah. Just going in and kind of like doing the AU approach. And I was been watching this thing about Tim Thomas, where they, you know, he had like him, Rip Hamilton, Vince Carter, and Kobe Bryant on the AU team. <laughs> they faced like Ron Artest, Eldon Brand, and a couple other dudes. Well, that's great when it works out and you got Hall of Fame players, yeah. but it's not great when you get all those guys and they don't mesh. And so you went... You want to make sure the team, the team concept and role playing doesn't get diminished based on two things, Nick. Enrico is who you bring in. So, you know, people are always going to evaluate their feelings and all that stuff. But then also, how does everybody deal with the new found success? Mm. Because if you somehow get caught up in it, you aren't the same Jay Foreman, Nick Sainer, or Rico from 2023 and 24 mm-hmm. and 24 and 25, yeah. even though you are in the same body. And that's huge. I'm curious. I mean, so you got to almost re-recruit your roster, retrain your roster yeah. before you go out and do it. Yeah. And under, so you get that stuff situated first. You get what I mean? Yeah. Clean up your house first. Yeah. Before Make you go sure ahead. your house is in order before right. you invite somebody in. Exactly. That's kind of what it is. I'm, exactly. I'm kind of, you know, everybody talks about the, the table setter. And, you know, I mentioned it earlier with character, you know, getting a big man who, you know, maybe not a scoring threat, but just somebody who's going to be a presence inside, maybe, you know, 
hopefully you want somebody that can block shots, but just somebody who's inside that can alter shots at the very least and just be a presence inside um, where you haven't had that. Uh, especially with this team. I know Rink was, you know, he's a bigger guy with some longer arms, but it's not like, you know, yeah. people weren't afraid to drive at him and and go up against him. So having somebody in there and, you know, you like you said, though, you got to have somebody that's going to mesh with right. the team and not throw off the dynamics. Another thing is uh, somebody who, and again, got a mesh, that you can get the ball to and they can just get a bucket. Right. Like well, not, somebody gonna it, demand, yeah. not somebody who's going to demand, not somebody who's going to demand the ball and have to have the ball at all. Right. Somebody because there is a difference when it gets yeah. when it gets down to crunch time and you're like, we need somebody to get a bucket. Maybe or it's make not a, a play. Yeah, just make a play. Somebody like that. Let me ask you guys this: this is, this is a little quick pivot. If Nebraska, I guess, played better, or if it, the optics look better Friday, would number one, would we or would you be having this in depth? question based on positions or personnel that's number one Mm -hmm. and number two should you change and and this isn't like maybe your recruiting philosophy or your team building based off one game because it's almost like going to a bowl game and getting blitzed by a quarterback and a receiver that had just been on one Mm -hmm. in a defense or something like that or thirdly not that you bury your head in the sand and don't listen to outside, you know, suggestions. Do you say, okay, I like what we're doing. Say 85% of what we're doing. Now we need to get this 85% up to like 92%, mm-hmm. whether it's toughness, situational basketball, that's game to game, team to team, area of the country, area of the country. Or do you d- address more in the first two and, and try to fix it that way? I, I think it's got to be a blend. Um to, to your first question about if it would have looked differently, but Nebraska still loses, are we still having this conversation or this in-depth conversation? I think, yes. I don't, I don't think anything changes. I, I think, I mean, cause these are things now at the start of the year point guard, for example, right. Going back to last year. And this is like not a knock on Aaron Uless, but we know that's who we're kind of referencing here. Stats at Iowa didn't jump off the page was a very, very late portal edition last year. And you kind of figured it was because Nebraska needed to go get a guy. They need, they needed a guy. Um, And you didn't know about obviously all the off off court stuff. And and I, it felt like that was kind of, we just need to get another body in that room that, that we trust. Not to say Aaron Eulis needs to not be a member of Nebraska next year. That's not what I'm getting at here. What I'm saying is that Nebraska is in a in a opportune position, opportunistic position where they've got tangible success and improvement that they can point to over the last two years, even three. If you want to go, hey, listen, we went from 10 wins to 16 wins now to 23 wins. They have a better idea, I think, of who they, what type of player they need to identify and what type of player they need to bring in. Oh, for sure. And so, yeah. so now the pitch, the the approach, I think, is really interesting. And I'm, I'm excited to see how Fred and his staff navigate this offseason just to see, okay, who are they able to go attract? Because now, what does an NCAA tournament berth do for you? Does it get you in the door to at least have some of those preliminary conversations with some of the best transfer portal options. And I think it does. And so then it's, you know, then you talk about Fred's history of, of his just basketball acumen where it's front office, NBA player, a successful college coach at Iowa state, a successful college player. So I, I think you can go down the list and it provides some, some optimism for maybe what Nebraska could even just continuously upgrade through the portal. Because I think the pitch is is different, and I'm I'm interested to see now that Nebraska has stability, right? Fred Hoiberg signs an extension. Fred Hoiberg has his staff. There, staff. you're not expecting people to move. You're not expecting yeah. you were able to go out and bring in Ernie Ziegler from another Power Five school at Mississippi State. You were able to bring in Nate Lenzer from the from the Windy City Bulls, and you were able to bring in Adam Howard, give him kind of step a step up in the coaching world, and he's proven his ability. And, and so, like. Kurt Joseph comes from the Minnesota Timberwolves. So like you have this, this talented and what feels like stable group of coaches around you. If you're Fred Hoiberg, that that can be part of the pitch is that nobody's really expected to move on. 
Fred Hoiberg's not going anywhere. Yeah. And I feel like that could be part of the pitch to not just one. I think when we think about the transfer portal, it's just one year and done. I'm, 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 I'm mentioning like I'm thinking about who are guys that maybe are in there, have played two years of basketball and have two left or have played just one year and have three left because that's where you, I think you can really make some continuous success. Derek Walker, perfect example. Derek D walk had multiple years in Nebraska and from a program standpoint, you saw how that benefited Nebraska. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's head to break. When we come back, we're going to wrap things up. We might actually dive into a little bit of a Husker baseball conversation, Nebraska baseball, 17 and five on the season. They've won seven straight and uh, including a couple of midweek games, which may have been their bugaboo last year. They have bullpen depth. They have the ability to, to hit the ball and manufacture runs. Notice I say manufacture runs and not just hit the ball over the fence. Um, they're getting some starting pitching from guys like Brett Sears, who's having an incredible start to the year. There's a lot to talk about with Husker baseball. We haven't really been able to talk a lot of Husker baseball, softballs, those kind of things over the last week and a half just because of uh, the excitement around the basketball programs, and rightfully so. We also had spring football starting today. Um, Austin is out, so I'm going to be joining Strick from up for on the block from 2 to 4. So we'll dive into all that throughout the course of the next two hours and change before we hand it off to DP and J for old school. So don't go anywhere. We'll wrap up the happy hour and get you ready for on the block coming up next. Download our app by searching 93.7 The Ticket in your app store to stay in touch and listen all day long wherever you are. More of the happy hour is next on 937 The Ticket and the Ticketfm.com. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at the Ticketfm.com. On the internet, KNTK FM Firth, 937 The Ticket. <laughs> Jake Sorensen here for The Body Shop. My wife is nearing her due date with our first child and has been in need of a good massage as her body continues to change and adapt. Dennis and the team at The Body Shop were incredible with the prenatal massage that she's still talking about today. I was also able to get a deep tissue massage, so it was a great bonding experience and a unique couple's massage in general. If you're in need of stress relief, book a massage today at thebodyshoplincoln.com, The Body Shop at 48th and A. This is Monster Jam. Witness Big Air. Two wheel skills, backflips, and all out racing. Monster Jam, as big as it gets. Brought to you by the original Super Glue. Stop by your local participating Westlake Ace Hardware locations for your $10 savings coupon. Restrictions may apply. See store for details. Coming to Pinnacle Bank Arena this Friday and Saturday. Ninety-three seven. The ticket. Fox KFXL weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today: a chance of rain expected throughout the day. See falling temperatures with a high around fifty-two. Tonight, a chance of wintry mix and blowing snow possible. We'll see a low around twenty-three. And tomorrow, a slight chance of snow in the morning. Otherwise, mainly sunny and windy. High around thirty-six. The meteorologist Kyle Clark for ninety-three point seven. The ticket and the ticket FM Action Plumbing, Heating, Air, and Electric is the call I make when I have a need for plumbing services. Whether it's for my home or office, if I need a repair to a water heater, softener, or even my garbage disposal, I know I can count on Action to help. In one simple call, their amazing customer service team promptly schedules a service call, often getting to my needs within a day. Action delivers honest, quality services we can count on. To learn more, visit actionlincoln.com. Old School with DP and J. Do you think it's too early to talk about Patrick Mahomes as the greatest of all time? You know, to be honest with you, I think he might be on ahead of the pace. It was definitely on on pace, maybe ahead of the pace. I think right now everything that he does is going to get over overblown. And I think people <laughs> so quickly forgot the 20-year run of the Patriots. Not five, six years. 20-year run of Tom Brady and the Patriots. Uh, 93 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Okay, it's time to sell the house. How do we even begin to choose from the hundreds of realtors in town? Easy. We make a pros list. You mean a pros and cons list? No, just a pros list. We need someone with pro photography to showcase the house in the best possible way. Pro marketing to make sure we get maximum exposure. Pro negotiations so we know we get the best price. This is one of those times where you already know the right answer, isn't it? 
You know it is Ben Blecker and Professional Realty Group. Contact Ben Blecker and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Services Ambassador online at prg-ne.com. Hi folks, Sean Callahan here for Couple Chevrolet GMC and the Chevrolet and GMC Truck Month is now underway. We've got huge savings in Louisville. Get 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months on select models. Yes, you heard right. That's 9000 off or 1.9% for 72 months happening right now at Copple. So take that short money saving drive down 144th Street or check us out online at copplecars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with proof credit. Stock number G214773. Hi, it's Charlie Stone back with the latest update from Andy Goodyear of Honda of Lincoln. Andy, your new car selection keeps getting better and better every Every month. Can you tell our listeners all about it? You know, it sure is, Charlie. It's great that our customers can come in, pick out a new Honda, and drive away with it that day. How many new Hondas do you have in stock? Well, right now we have just about 100 in stock. Hey, I hear you've won some very important awards in your service department. Tell us about them. Well, the first one is we won the award for the first fixed award. So the cars are actually fixed on the very first time they're brought in. Second award is our customer service experience award. And then our third award is our Honda Express Service Elite. And we rank the best in quality and customer satisfaction. Maybe it's time you come experience the Honda of Lincoln way of doing business. 27th and Yankee Hill Road or online at HondaOfLincoln.com. Hey guys, it's Bill Bush. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty has opened a new location in Pender, Nebraska, in addition to their office in Lincoln. The real estate world can be confusing, so why wouldn't you want an expert helping you every step of the way? If you're looking to buy or sell farmland in Nebraska, Kansas, or Iowa, give Ethan Sorensen a call today at 402-380-0432 or visit them online at nextagrealestate.com. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty with locations in Lincoln and now Pender, Nebraska. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. On the block with Strick and Austin. Now to tie it back to Nebraska men's basketball, this group has a chance to do something that hasn't been done before. Yeah. You know, in making a run in the Big Ten tournament, a serious run, in winning the first NCAA tournament game, but they're not going to get there by doing the same things they've always done. It is on this team to step up and change that narrative. It won't change on its well, own. Teams won't play over for you, and that's the mindset well, shift we haven't consistently seen yet. Weekdays from 2 to 4. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You're listening to The Happy Hour with Nick Sainert. A gorilla bear versus polar bear? A what bear versus a what bear? And Enrique Alvarez Clary. A gorilla bear versus a polar bear? Polar bear. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> gorilla. Gorilla versus a polar bear? Sponsored by Empire Fence and Netting. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We're back here on Happy Hour 93.7, the ticket, the ticket, fm.com. Thanks to Jay for hanging out. Didn't know Jay was going to stop by. Here we are. He just waltzed on in, hang, hung out with us. He just said he was going to join, and we were like, okay. Yeah, cool. Hang out, Jay. I thought he was going to stay for the first segment. That he stayed for, <laughs> they stayed for the second one. There it is. Uh, 402-464-5685, the Honda Lincoln Hotline, and the Sarder Heyman text line are open for you guys. We uh, are now joined. We'll go ahead and bring him in, too. By uh, Husker Hall of Famer, Eric, 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 Eric. Woo! Wait, wait a minute. Hold, hold on. on. We just got to mute this let's, real quick. Uh, let's hold on. Let me let me figure this out real quick. Let's try this. There we go. We'll do that. All right. Let's see if we can hear Strick now. Strick, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You guys there are he is. I just had to, oh, click, yeah. I had to click some different things. Yeah. Stricky, yeah. Stricky, where in the world are you? Uh, I'm on my way back home, actually. Um, nice. Obviously, with a lot of... The, the trip there in itself was a journey of its own. <laughs> yeah. But um, upon returning, it just prices were people trying to exit and get out of there. So mm -hmm. 
um, ended up getting a better deal. It just the best deal was to leave late tonight. So uh, I don't blame you. Always trying to make sure that the ticket's hey. saving money. Save that money. <laughs> Look um, at you. Look so at you. so you're in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Okay, my, nice. my flight. My flight. It was. It was like. Um, it, Memphis is a small airport, similar to Omaha, you know, so okay. obviously you get better options if you get to a, a more of a hub. And, and yeah. so I came in and got to a hub and that way get out and it's not not an expensive ticket to get out. Well, Stricky, I know it's been a lot of basketball and you and I you and I are going to break down a lot of uh, Husker basketball NCAA tournament as well over the course of the next uh, two hours on the block. I do want to mention, though, before just in the crossover here. I don't know how much you guys have paid attention to Husker baseball, but um, now we are fully in the spring sports season. Now that Nebraska women's basketball and, and men's basketball has moved on and, and done with their season gymnastics uh, just entered. Yeah. The, uh, they just got Regionals. Their, heard their name called for the NCAA tournament, which is always a good thing to hear Headed as well. Down to Arkansas. That's which right. Apparently is a stacked region. I'll have yes. to look and see what other teams are. Um, uh, hey, uh, it's gonna it's uh i think it's arizona arizona state kentucky and uh there's one other but there's two i think top 15 gymnastics programs and then arizona and i think i want to say arizona state yeah so In so i mean there's a couple uh but nebraska baseball here guys just to roll just to it briefly just cover it 17 and 5 this year they had their game on sunday obviously kind of get canceled along with softballs did as well um, but they got canceled against New Mexico State. That's after they took the first two. And Stricky, I want to tell you this. So Nebraska ba baseball, their RPI, 10th in the RPI this year to this point. They have the 28th uh, hardest schedule in the country. Um, they've won seven straight and 16 of their last 19 games. And got Nebraska some revenge. Baseball. Yes, <laughs> got some revenge um, on some teams that beat them last year. <laughs> well, and most importantly, they're they won their two midweek games last week. Yeah, and, yeah, and it wasn't like pretty, but they they're able to knock off Omaha at home, and they're able to beat North Dakota State at Haymarket Park. And it they were especially the North Dakota State one, where I believe they won just two to one or a three to one maybe potentially over over North Dakota State. Uh, yeah, three to one. It was a gross night. It was cold. It was windy. The wind was blowing in from center field, so it was hard to get the ball to fly. It was a pitcher-friendly evening. And to that point, you have to be able to manufacture runs, whether that's mm -hmm. sacrificing ABs, whether that's dropping bunts, whether that's moving guys over. So you obviously have to manufacture runs offensively, but on the, on the flip side for Nebraska – you need bullpen help. Like those are the midweek, the midweek games. You're, you're you're more than likely throwing out a bullpen guy to start the game. You're hoping he gets maybe three, maybe four innings for you, and then you're just kind of piecing some things together and seeing if you can maybe grow and develop some guys in the midweek. And to this point, Nebraska's done a really, really good job of helping out their starting pitchers. They're winning games three to one. They just won one on Saturday, two to one. Um, against New Mexico State, they've won games eight to six. They like the 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 smaller margin of you know differences in the, on the scoreboard provides excitement for Husker fans. I think because now Nebraska has bullpen help for the first time in depth it, for the first time in the last couple of years. How about this stat line on the season for Nebraska starting pitcher Brett Searstricky? Four and zero. Oh, he started six games. He's four and zero. Oh, has a 1.14 earned run average in 39 and a third innings pitched. He's allowed just 16 hits, just five runs, and this strikeout to walk ratio, seven walks, 43 strikeouts. That's limiting base runners, limiting traffic, and, and limiting freebies. Well, that's what they've that's what they were missing in the last few years. I they they weren't getting that kind of pitching or having that type of uh ace. Yeah. It was a it was it was a compilation of guys trying to get it done. But when you've got somebody who, especially with that type of uh, strikeout to walk ratio, that means he's he's getting strikes. And I've always said, and we talked about this last year, is there's nothing better to play for 
than a pitcher throwing strikes. You know, oh, yeah. it just just how it just boggles the mind staying out there when there's walks and walks and uh, they're just they're just not in there hits and. You know, all that stuff, there's nothing greater than to have somebody to have that kind of strike to, to uh, walk ratio. Yeah, I mean, and then you have, you know, UNO transfer Rand Sanders in seven appearance, hasn't allowed a single run. Um, he's only walked one guy in seven innings. Uh, opponents are hitting .091 against him. Uh, so, I mean, th- that's that's a transfer that Nebraska got in. You have a, a second-year guy in Jalen Worthley. Who's two and zero on the season in relief? You have their their save guy Casey Dice, who has four saves on the year in seven appearances. Um, even even a guy like Kyle Perry has had ten appearances and is outside of maybe one or two ap- uh, appearances, slam the door when he's needed. And, and the freshman Tucker Timmerman from Beatrice is two and zero. There's just a lot of interesting and, and exciting pieces for the seventeen and five ball club. That, by the way is a fringe top 25 team right now. They are on the outside looking in. However, another midweek matchup tomorrow, Mm -hmm. midweek matchup tomorrow against number 23, Kansas state, Um, Kansas state 17 and six on the year. These are the midweek games that when you're in the big 10 conference guys can kill you. It's similar to a quad three game with college basketball. It feels like where, no, they're not going to make the resume stand out, but man, they will make it stick out like a sore thumb if you don't lose it. And so, or excuse me, if you do lose They'll it, win. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And so, so Nebraska's got to figure out a way to continue to put some success here against the Kansas States and against the Creightons. One last thing before we get out of here, guys, in the Big Ten Conference, we kind of know the the top teams in the Big Ten, and it's. It's the the Maryland's, the Iowa's, the uh, Indiana's, and Nebraska usually. Ohio State's in the mix there. How about this? Nebraska plays Ohio State at home. Nebraska plays Maryland in a three-game set at home. Nebraska plays a three-game set against Iowa at home. And Nebraska plays a three-game set against Indiana at home. You're talking about all of those highly high-quality Big Ten opponents. You don't have to go on the road for any of them. The, the two two out of three each weekend is clearly in in reach, and that allows you to get to a, you know have a postseason expectation. Well, you definitely want to be able to land in the region, and I know we yeah. got to get out of here. But you that would be good to be able to land in the region where they've been kind of on the outside looking in a couple times. Yeah, and that's and will will Bolt talk so much about. You just got to make a regional. In Nebraska, they want to get to a point where they're hosting the regional. And so yeah. uh, you just get that. Will Bolt and his staff talk so much about it. All right. Stick around on the block with uh, Strick and myself is coming up next. It's going to be a good one. We got plenty to talk about. We'll talk to you guys on the happy hour tomorrow. Adios. How do people feel about getting big fitness energy at Planet Fitness for 